career prize money over almost eight million dollars 1988 prize money two hundred and twenty two thousand five fifty Grand Slam highlights for Chris. Won Wimbledon here in 74, 76, and 81. Was runner-up in 73, 78, 79, 80, 82, 84, and 85. Won the French Open seven times. Chris has struggled a little bit, lost a set in the second round to Christina Singer, lost a set to Katrina Adams, and also uh, then came through with just a tiebreak in the second set against Helena Sokova in the quarterfinals. She has gotten a little bit better each time. And threads the needle down the backhand side, but nowhere near the sideline. So Martina there with a not so confident volley. And uh, I feel that for Martina to win this match, she has to start off in fine fashion because she struggled all day yesterday with Ros Fairbank. My book was lucky to win it. What happened yesterday, that attempted a drop volley from Martina there, uh, went back and bounced on the service line, and this allowed Chris Everett to get into that point and eventually win it with a volley from the net there. This is the 78th time these two players have played. Martina leads 40-37. Chris has won the last two times they've met. Without giving you all those scores, the first time they met was in Akron, Ohio in 1973. Break point for Martina. This will be the ninth time they played here at Wimbledon. Martina leads 6-2. I don't know how you feel, but we'll take another look at that last point. That's the approach shot with not a lot on it, and uh, Chris Evert is going to make those passing shots that Ros Fairbank couldn't convert yesterday. And Martina's got to start off in an aggressive fashion here, I feel. Another break point for Martina. I was going to say, I don't know how you feel, but I don't feel that either one of these gals have played well this Wimbledon for them. And then perhaps it is the fact that they, they are veterans. They are um, slightly on the, down, on the downside of their careers. I agree, Tony, but I think for different reasons. I think Chris Everett came in, coming in here did not have the preparation she usually has for Wimbledon. I think she's playing a lot better at this towards the end of the last week. Double fault to lose the first service one. A good start for Martina Navratilova. Martina, of course, 31 years of age from the United States, seated two here, WITA ranking two, career prize money, 12 and three quarter million dollars, just about 1988 prize money, 395,000 odd dollars. <laughs>
for Martina. Of course, won Wimbledon eight times, going for a record ninth. The French Open, she won twice and a runner-up on four occasions. Won the US Open title four times and the Australian Championships three times. Is that all? Not bad, is it, at age 31? <laughs> Prize money, 12 and three quarter million dollars, close to it, incredible. That's a better point from Navratilova. And to get here, Martina didn't really struggle until the fourth round against Savchenko. She was down. That was when it was uh, bad weather, and that match had to be carried over. But yesterday against Ross Fairbank, a struggle right from the start. She managed to get out of it 7-5 in the third. Richard Lum, umpire Richard Lum, here's another look. You'll see now Chris doesn't flinch afterwards. She thinks it was long. Well, they won't continue the tape. She moved over there to play it, and then when it bounced, just uh, pulled away. So she thought it was well long. Strangely enough, that uh, first serve, if it was over more than four or five inches past that uh, service line, then the Cyclops is not activated. The Cyclops is only activated uh, to something that's two or three inches past that service line. Activated by the lines person. Just finishing that story about their preparation, I think Chris had limited preparation coming into this event and has improved as the tournament's gone on. I think Martina's under a lot of pressure trying to go for the record ninth singles title. And it shows there on that forehand volley, and it really showed in that match yesterday, Tony. I thought both that those girls in that third set yep. were so darn nervous they could Tight. hardly walk around. That's right. It's break point now for Chris. Martina actually, after match point in the Fairbank quarterfinal yesterday, somebody asked her for an autograph and she said, I don't think I could write now, even if I wanted to. I think one thing, here's another look and watch the good footwork by Martina. Sets up, gets back in. It comes back the second time and she is ready. See how she slid into that ball, body weight going into the smash, good wrist snap. No mistake about the second one and she has the advantage. Game and with an ace, Martina moves out to a two love lead. It would seem to me that Martina would be more relaxed at this stage of the tournament because if she did in fact lose to Chris Everett, it would not be a bad loss up to this time. Any of her matches would be considered a bad loss for her, so she can probably relax a little bit, take a little better swing at it. same stage last year these two played in the 87 semi-final as we look at that off forehand from Martina and that was the best match of the tournament in the women's division and Martina won that one 6-2-5-7-6-4 in a very entertaining semi-final Two have played five times in the finals here at Wimbledon, and Martina has won all five times. Good 
Two break points for Martina would give her a big lead of a three love with two breaks. I think something that's helping Martina is that Chris is not going for too much on the serve here, Tony. Ross Fairbank yesterday had a little more stick on the first serve. That's out. Now Ratulova breaks and leads three love first set. Notoriously slow starter, but she is in trouble here in the first set, having lost her first two service games. Martina serving at three love. Wouldn't you like to have all the youngsters you work with have the footwork of a Chris Everett and the racket preparation? Oh, boy. All the service motion of a Martina Navratil over. Threads that one down the line. This is pretty much the start that Martina would have been hoping for. If, uh, if you could ask us, you would say, I'd like to get out there and win the first few games to give my confidence a kick. She tried to psych herself into the fact that she played well yesterday. But deep down, I don't think she really feels that she did. And to get out to a great start like this today must certainly help her. There's the off serve. Tough one for the left-hander to hit, but uh, a very difficult one to return. Up. Just 15 minutes of play. Fine serve there. Watch the touch on this drop volley. That's a better one. Just over the net. Delicate placement. Ball up. Baseline rally here. There's the drop shot. Good one it is too, but Martina is backing off towards the baseline rather than moving forward on that one, and Chris just angles it across in front of her. Late call again. Martinez been upset from a late service call from the chair, but that was from the baseline. Now Richard Lum is getting himself in a pickle. 
calls the wrong score but corrects it so it's 40 love to Everett close from our vantage point here, looked out. it looked out because we're looking from our broadcasting booth right down that tram line right down that singles line there no chalk didn't see chalk however 40 15 good so that 40 love lead evaporates top spin cross court and uh, have it down the line but what's this one great preparation and then she rotates the shoulders cross court a little bit of top spin from low to high for the winner that's why I would suspect that at the moment Chris is worried about being embarrassed out here. Uh, down love four. She can't hold on, hold on here. Martina would have three breaks in this first set. It's not something Chris wants to see happen. And the last match in the first set, it was Martina that was embarrassed because that was the finals of the Virginia Slims of Houston. It was played on clay. And uh, Chrissy won that one six love, six four. So very rarely throughout their 87 meetings, as either one lost a set six love. Everett gets on the board. Martina leads 4 1 first set. It's Everett on the board now but still down two service breaks to the defending champion. Checked out their head-to-heads here from uh, 73, the first match to 1988. They've played uh, 77 times, not 87 times, and on nine occasions, there's, there's been a six-love set in there. <laughs> Apart from one match in Florida in 1981, where Chris Everett won that one, six love, six love, and that was a final on clay at Amelia Island. Here's another look at Chris. Doesn't get this real deep, but sort of Martina's feet. Just couldn't stretch up and handle that smash. Just a quick uh, calculation in my head, Fiery. They've played about 184, 185 sets against one another. Think they know one another's game? <laughs> I would think so. Thirty 
Our top juniors out on court, Jason Stoltenberg, seated number one in this championship. Todd Woodbridge, number four. Stoltenberg winning quite easily. Todd Woodbridge having a big battle. Lost the first set, and he's down four or five in the second to Toms of West Germany. 13-15. A lot of good youngsters coming out of West Germany now since Boris Becker put the game on the map there three years ago by winning Wimbledon. Other Australians, I'll go through them. Richard Fromberg still in there, as is John Marinoff. We've been updating you on those scores from the juniors, both in the girls and boys, and we will certainly continue to do that throughout the afternoon. 40 days. That is the second double by Martina. Chris just not making many returns, certainly effective return of serve. And Martina's been doubly effective against her serve. In the girls' championship, it's Joanne Fall and Rachel McQuillan doing quite well. Joanne Fall beat Michelle Bowery in the first round, two Australians meeting in the first round. Oh, game Nabrata leads five games to one, first set. Much happier Martina on centre court today than yesterday on court 14. One. Well executed that volley, but watch the athleticism here. Good preparation, good footwork, and a well-directed smash. held that two-hander about as long as she could to see where Martina was going. And she's, Martina stayed in the opposite, the cross-court corner, so she just nudged it down the line. prior to the tournament and uh, she definitely wanted to come back here and play this is her 17th consecutive Wimbledon had a bad heel went back for treatment after the French championships but wanted to play this one solid smash that time up very nicely good deep ground strokes that one a little short from martina this allows chris to get into the net and a pretty fair overhead from martina you can see where chris hits that one from three-quarter court good balance on the overhead cross-court one and Chris Everett good wheels here as she takes this one on the rise and was there in plenty of time to throw it down the line good depth on that approach then from Navratilova
That certainly caught Martina by surprise. The drop shot was not very good. It hit fairly near the surface line. Watch where this one hits, but Martina was behind the baseline, does her little straddle step. Watch where this hits. Very near the service line, but still Martina, who was very didn't even make an attempt for it, so she was completely fooled. Very short second serve from Chris Everett there, and that allowed Martina to run around and tee off on that forehand and a great volley. The two service breaks allow her to do those things as well. She's comfortably in the lead here, so she can take some chances. Good depth again from both ladies here. And then the drop shot off the short ball. Thought Martina may have approached on that, but Chrissy's right on that one. The drop shots really haven't paid off. There's Chrissy. Watch that preparation as she runs for that one. Just a little bit of topspin across in front of Martina. Game point. Longest game in the match so far. And Chris Everett really struggling on serve today. Martina's inside the baseline, and you would suspect if she gets a short serve, she'll try to come in behind the return. Well, the tactics are to continue to do that whilst Chris is missing the passing shots. And not look how short that serve was. This allows Martina to get in, and this is one of the better backhands we've seen from Chris Everett today. game the net cord Chris not able to reach it to do anything with it except push it back and Martina was sitting right on the volley well, they've wrong-footed one another in the last two points and another short one there, Martina barely reaches it and anticipating the cross court. There it is, that patented forehand down the line. Game point once more for Everett. just hammering those ground strokes now totally relaxed well as you mentioned a 5-1 lead gets you a little bit that way and you can do that go for the shots whilst they're working for you I feel at this stage Chris is endeavoring to try and slow the momentum down get the ball in play but she's got to get a little bit better depth and also get some first serves in Chris has always talked about trying to develop her serve so that she can get a couple of cheap points per game from opponents like Martina does, but she just doesn't have that capability. Well, Martina, if she was in trouble, would never have attempted that shot, a half volley driving passing shot. She'd have backed off and tried to keep that one in play, but 
with a couple of service breaks. Now it's set point. Game set Thirty-four minutes. Martina wins the first set, six-one. The emotion of Martina Navratilova looking over at her entourage as she has won the first set from Chris Everett, six games to one in just 34 minutes. And I would think that if there's any fire left in Chris Everett, it would start to burn right now because she was embarrassed in that first set, having lost her serve three times. Good court coverage. There's the little dink, but uh, Martina on the way to that one anticipated it and had the court open, but uh, just hit the top of the tape with the forehand. Took a little bit larger swing than perhaps she needed if she'd had a little shorter preparation. Just thought more about guiding the ball and getting some extra pace on it. She might have been more successful. But it was a long run. Second double fault, third double fault from their rattle over. Sorry, so first game of this vital second set for Chris Everett. The door opens just a little. Well, Martinez got it all going today. There's the beautiful fluid motion of Martinez. She holds the weight and then up and after the ball, the stutter step, half volley. Look at that knee on the ground to play that one. And then great reflexes for that forehand volley. direct that two-hander away from Martina. 14 seconds. Losing oh. semifinals, for, excuse me, will get approximately $63,000 American dollars. Depends on the exchange rate you use. 36,090 pounds. Winner of the event, Tony? Uh, I figure about $260,000. Runner-up will get about half of that. And Martina, there's the starter step in good position, but let's see the racket head drop on that volley and uh, just lost it completely. Wrist went on it and into the bottom of the net. Break point for Chris. She could use it for her confidence. Very important game. It's a tough one. The ball's going all <laughs> always. That one, a difficult shot to make. That one, there it is. And uh, now we've got it right. And a fine cross-court passing shot to break point. See what kind of a second serve Martina can put in. She has served three doubles. Wins the first game of the second set.
missed it by Martini. See the big hook on it. Chris was not going to play it, but she ends up making a terrific passing shot to get the break. It's now my pleasure to turn the microphone over to Betsy Nagelson. Thank you, Tony. Betsy Martin has been struggling and very much so in the match against Ross Fairbank, trying to pump herself up, get confident. You have a story on that. Well, I know uh, Martina yesterday playing out on, on court 14 was in tons of trouble. In fact, she's very lucky to be here today and she won that match on guts and determination alone because she was not playing well. just to let you know how important as we get another look at this this last point martina comes in on a good approach it was deep and a good passing shot from chris as martina makes the volley you can see the stutter step good athleticism this title is just so critical to martina that she made a call to jim lair who's a sports psychologist that she's been working with for the past several months and uh, she had him fly over so he is here and he's trying to just keep Martina mentally under control baffles me. How does he keep her mentally under control? Tell her that she's hitting great forehands and backhands? Or... Well, I think he just tries to, to uh, calm Martina down and the more important Martina treats this title, just the harder it is for her to win it. The more she wants it and, and the more importance she places on it, I, I'm sure that uh, the tighter and the harder it is for her. And so I think Jim is trying to just calm her down. 14 seconds. Double fault there from Chris Everett, the second. And at a very inopportune moment because if she can consolidate this service break, this early break in the second set, she was well into this match. <coughs> Perfectly placed lob there from Chris Everett. So she does hold serve and leads two games to love. Betsy, the first set, as we just look at this last point, a great lob. The first set, uh, Chris didn't get too many first serves in, was very short on the second serve, and that allowed Martina to really take charge of the first set. Well, exactly, and Chris has never been known as a, as a very quick starter, I and mean, she's also never been known for letting up. She will just fight to the bitter end, and I, I know she's very pleased to be here in the semifinals as well because she's had a couple of three-setters here. She's done well to come back from the foot injury. More pinpoint accuracy from Chris Everett. Not a tremendous approach. It was down the middle, not much on it, so Chris was able to get set up and hit that passing shot. You're right, Fred, that Martina is constantly trying to tell herself that she is confident, that she can take this title, that she is playing well, as you do see some great quickness from, from Martina. But I don't think in her heart of hearts she is that confident. But mind over matter, I know she's trying to believe. You've got to continue to tell yourself that, haven't you, when you're out there? Exactly, because if you can act it and tell yourself 
that even if you uh, even if it's not happening sooner or later it does come around if you can just continue to to tell yourself that you're playing well and if you can act that way good breaking sir Chris uh, looking at the lines person over there but that brought chalk up and uh, Martina with the backhand volley goes to 40 15 Beautiful sunny day here now. Martina, the left-hander, checking the position of the sun there for the ball toss on the serve. Another perfect passing shot from Chris as she has time to set up again. You can see the good racket preparation. Went high over the net, but it landed just on the baseline. These are perfect conditions for Martina because it's a little bit quicker. The court's faster today than yesterday. Conditions not as heavy. The balls don't get as heavy. Get a little bit more on your serve. And yesterday was a very bleak day. Dude. Another bad ball toss on the serve all over the place. That's the fourth double fault. You know the last couple of days uh, over to Rangi Park, which is where the players practice just next door here to Wimbledon, Martina has been spending most of her practice time on her serve. Which indicates that uh, she's just trying to get it better. I don't feel she has the rhythm on her serve that uh, she normally has. So she's just trying to find it. This match could be so interesting if they get to a third set, which Martina is facing a break point here to go two breaks down in the second set. Fine first serve straight at the Everett body and couldn't get out of it to execute the, couldn't get away from it to execute the two-hander. Juice again. So much of Martina's game does revolve around her serve. Gives her tremendous confidence. Game, well, after a struggle, Navratilo over holes. Edit leads two games to one when we come back. once again to Nine's Wide World of Sports. Ladies semi-finals day. Chris Evert lost the first set. Six games to one in just 34 minutes and she has a service break in the second set. Leading two games to one and serving. Interesting game here because Everett broke the first service game of Navratilova. If you remember, Navratilova missed a very easy backhand volley and then uh, served a double fault. And Chris executed the break point and held serve. And uh, Martina, for a moment there, looked as though the wheels might fall off a little bit, but she's come back. Betsy, who do you think the crowd would be with here if this match was to go to a third set? Martina or Chris? Well, I think that's a hard one to say, Fred, because I think they adore Chris Everett here. And, uh, but I also think they're very um, aware of what Martina's trying to achieve. 
And I think they're supportive of that. Do you think that puts any pressure on Martina, that going for the ninth singles title? We look at the execution on the volley. Good reach from Martina. Textbook stuff. Oh, I think a great deal, Fred, which is, I think, the major reason that she decided to have Jim Lair, the sports psychologist that she has been working with for the past four months or so, come over here just to try to get her through this, help get her through it. Both girls using that offensive lob very well today. Martina disguises this well because with the same motion she can hit another slice, but up in the air it goes. Just over Chris's racket. Perfect height. 30 all. Chris, I mean, Martina mentioned in the press this morning that she just refused to lose yesterday against Ros Fairbank but I think Ros Fairbank got awfully tight on that volley at 4-2 and pretty much presented it to Martina at that stage. Well, Ros had uh, at least four chances. Game is well, a weak return there, two of them in a row and if you can read lips he wasn't real happy with that one and so Martina lost that game. Chris holds and leads three games to one, second set. Three games to one in the second set. Martina now has to face the fact that she's won the first one very easily and has to now battle back. So she's going to be a little more cautious rather than the way she was in the first set, hitting freely. Betsy, what does Chris have to do to keep the pressure on Martina here? She has her pretty much on the ropes at this stage in the second set. I think Chris should use the remainder of the second set to be very aggressive, just to really hit out on her shots. Be very aggressive on the return of serve. So that she can make Martina worry about the serve. If Martina continues to not get a high percentage of first serves in, then she could be in trouble the rest of this afternoon. Well, it's become rather cool and blustery on center court at the moment. And the sun has disappeared. So we're in cloudy conditions once more. 40 love. More decisive game for Navratilova. She holds comfortably. Everett still leads 3-2. Welcome back to Wimbledon. And that's the situation over centre court here. We mentioned the sun had disappeared. Those dark clouds. Pretty gloomy looking sight at the moment. And I'd like to thank Betsy Nagelson. Betsy has to go to play a mixed doubles. And welcome back, Tony Trabert. Thank you, Fiery. I think you hit the nail right on the head when you said that Martina is not swinging at that ball as freely as she did when she had those couple of breaks in the first set. This right now is a big game for both players because Martina, if she can get a couple of short serves and uh, break serve here, then she'll have that confidence that she really possessed in the first set. Oh, 
Well, Martinez lucky to get away with that one because her drop volley hit on the service line. Chris not striking the ground strokes with the usual precision. Watch her though in isolation how quick she is. Short motion there and blocked it into the open court. Love 30. Good. After making Martina hit all those backhands, he <laughs> finally went to the forehand corner and hit the line with it. The longest rally of the match so far, and uh, Martina certainly get a bit of practice over there on the backhand seven. side. Crucial point, too, because uh, had Martina won that point, she'd have three break points that could even in the second set. Martina's taking a timeout, walking around. They have 30 seconds legally between points. <laughs> Deep breath and ready to go again. Oh. Now she's not too winded again. This is you would expect Martina to take the second serve if it's short at all and try to come in, insert some pressure. Very short second serve there from Chris Everett. And not much bite on it either. 15, 40. It doesn't really skid off the court, so it's two break points for Martina. Trying to level at three all in the second set. Now Ratilova's won the first one, 6 1. approach and watch the control on this one deep into the corner and Chris uh, extracts the best out of it good preparation just rolled it cross court but still down a break point Game is never too Martina gets the break back levels at three all in the second set with a good smash Good deep approach off a first serve this time, and the offensive lob, a good one, but uh, in position again on that overhead. In isolation, look at the footwork. Back there and throws that lob up in the air, lifts the racket up. But too tough a shot from Navratilova over to bring it back to three all. Just over one hour of play. 15 now. You mentioned that Jason Stoltenberg won his junior match, so did Richard Fromberg. And Todd Woodbridge has fought back against the young man from West Germany and is down 3-2 in the third set. And John Molinoff defeated David Adams from South Africa, 7-5, 6-2. Martinez ball is in the alley. And Richard Fromberg, seated seven in the juniors, defeated Mark Rossett of Switzerland, 6-2-7-6. And out on court six, we mentioned Jason Stoltenberg defeated Gustavo Carboneri from the Argentine, 6-4-6-1.
terrific forehand by Chris because Martinez volley was very very deep good serve and a good volley here good grass court tennis but uh, Everett up to the challenge and that one beautifully placed a do or die situation for Chris she knows she doesn't make the perfect shot she's out of the point anyway it's 30 all three all second set Martinez won the first six one have a look at this second serve Break point for Chris. Tough when you don't have a lot of confidence on that second serve to serve and volley against somebody that is so precise on the return as Chris Everett. Very accurate. Break for Chris. She leads four, three, second set. And watch the good run by Chris. Martina expects the angle. Watch Martina move. Chris bunts it down the line. A good job to get there. She had to do it one-handed. Chris to serve at four, three, and a second with a break. Hey. Best seven. Fine rally from the baseline again. This is what Chris is trying to do. Keep Martina back there. That one fell a little short, but she had time to prepare for that two-hander. This is the patented Everett shot in isolation. Look at the footwork she gets over there. Now, watch the preparation. There it is. And shoulder rotation, cross-court, beautiful finish. Rollies there, Trey. Yeah. I don't like the look of this. No, there's some activity in the in the spectators, and this is not going to help Martina because of her glasses. Alan Mill, the referee. This can really, really have an ill effect on Martina because uh, if it just drizzles enough, it gets on. Here she goes now. Richard Lum. There's Chris. Martina went to get a handkerchief so she is able to wipe her glasses between points. Alan Mills there talking to the folks at the Weather Bureau or check the satellite out and check see it out. <laughs> Chris can't believe that. Alan Mills, the referee there, has called it, and Chris, unbelievable. You can see the disgust on her face there. The only thing I, I would guess, Fred, is they have a report that some rain is coming in fairly quickly, and they want to get the court covered before the rain gets on it, which would then mean it would take longer to dry it out. But certainly, it's not raining hard enough right now. It doesn't appear to stop the match, but we will have to see if rain does come in here fairly quickly. But it would be to Chris's advantage had they been able to continue because Martinez wearing those glasses, and of course, as, as it gets darker, harder to follow the ball as well. So the players will leave the center court. I think it's a tough situation for both of them, but uh, I think it was Martino in the first set that took control very early. So if they're off for any 
time at all, I think it's going to help Martina when they come back. So you can see Martina and Chris leave the center court and we'll go into the locker room and get into some dry clothes and and have to just wait and see what happens, which uh, you have to do so frequently there. So a very important stage and a tough time to come back for Chris. And who do you think this will favor, Maka? It probably will favor Nart Martina, uh, especially if uh, she's been, you know, doing those uh, mental techniques that, that uh, she got the chap over for. And I think that she obviously started the match well today and could expect to start well again. Absolutely critical stage because Chris was really getting on top and I felt was starting to take control of the match. So I think the first uh, game or two is going to tell the story. Richard Lum there, the chair umpire. And we're ready to go. 15.30. Well, the crowd who have waited so patiently in the rain outside have all returned to centre court and it is packed to capacity once more. <laughs> oh, very determined looking Chris Abbott's come out of the locker room, Fred. There's good move there to take the aggressive position there and say to Martina, well, okay, if it's this early, you've got to make one. So it's game point. Taking a time. <laughs> and a great passing shot off the two-hander from Chris Everett and she holds as they come back here from the rain delay. Now leads five games to three. Well here Chris Everett once again comes up with a great backhand passing shot. Martina on the full stretch to her favorite volley but isn't able to make it. Players were off the court for approximately an hour, an hour and 10 minutes maybe. Chrissy's obviously had a chat to somebody too, Macca. Certainly looks like it. Hasn't she come out hot? It's an amazing thing, but it always seems to favour one player. It never seems to work out that they come out and they both start well. Always one seems to get the jump. on that forehand because it was hit right up the top of the racket took a bad bounce down at Martina's end and uh, it takes her to 40-15 on serve <laughs> well this is a spectacular return from Chris Havert Right on the full stretch. Great shot. 40-30. Well, that one was called wide. Missed that, so Martina whole serve. When we come back, Chris will be serving for the set. Have a look at that last point, Paul. Well, Chris Everett has the opportunity here, but she barely misses the passing shot. Big opportunity there, but now, live action, Chris Everett serving for the second set.
59. New tennis ball, so that should help. Not necessarily so, but uh, on most occasions it would give Chris a little bit more pace on the first serve. I think the major benefit would be that Martina doesn't have the advantage of serving with the new board, having the harder serve. Well, Martina never covered very much at all from that one. Chris uh, struggled to the ball. Got it with one hander on it. I really think Martina just freezes right here. Does not move at all. That was not a tough get. 30 love. for the double fault number three there she had a look at the breeze of course we've had a very cloudy day here and you can see the breeze there blowing the hair around so that could have been a problem on that ball toss 30 15. Right. And then again it could have been nerves serving for the set doesn't make you feel very good when you're in a situation like this the umpire calls 30 all has to correct himself of course it's a second serve so he's a little twitchy up there at the moment I think everyone's a bit nervous Fred just quite prepared to try and keep good depth, good length on that two-hander. And uh, if you were with us in the first set, she played that backhand of Martinez to death in the first set. So it is now set point. Severed, very disappointed to miss that backhand on set point. Had to stretch a little for the two-hander, but it was not a, a difficult one. So we're back to juice. One set point saved by Navratilova. <coughs> Has not been able to buy a first serve too much in this game. She served very well when they came out from the break. because she had to let it bounce but had plenty of time and went for it and missed it by a couple of meters so another set point the Everett clan there Mr. and Mrs. Everett and Andy Mill who was engaged to Chris
And the crowd sigh at every move, everything that's close to the line. It's an Everett crowd here. They love this lady, and you can see the applause from the parents and from the fiancé. Tough one for Martina, but Everett levels this match, winning the second set six games to four after an hour and 19 minutes. Well, a great fight back by Chris second Everett, set, Fred. Six games to four, one set all, final set. Having lost that first set, 6-1. Quiet, please. Quiet, please. Last year at the semi-final stage, these two played a barn burner. It went to three sets, and Martina won at 6-2-5-7-6-4. So it looks as though we could be in for another one. Who do you pick this time, Fred? So we see Chris Abbott. The great ground shots, but what a shot by Martina. Now, I think if it gets close in this, Martina will get tight the way she did against Ross there. She needs confidence on the serve. I think if she gets away to a good start in this third set, she could win it. But if it's uh, very close, I think he, Chrissy is a little bit more mentally tough. I'm with you, Fred. Fine overhead that time for Martina. As you see her get up to this, and wouldn't you like to have that one back at juice in the last game? Yep. 40, well, you can't do anything about this. She loses confidence. That forehand volley is pretty much one of the things that goes. She snaps at it. Still game point, though. Oh, a great stretch volley. Now rattle over holes. One game to love. Third and final set. Nines wide world of sports, 88 coverage. Chris not happy with that forehand. Ladies single semi-final. 6-1 now rental over, 6-4 Everett, and we're into the third. just been talking about the fact whoever can take control here in this third and final set early in the third and final set could run out the winner and both girls know it Bad hop on the serve, or so Martina thought. Uh, came into her body, jammed the forehand. She couldn't control it, so it's 40-15. Hour and 25 minutes they've been out there. Oh, 
And Chris Zavitt quite happy to try and keep the ball deep. So she's won that service game. One all in the third set. One game all, final set. Tactics now for Everett is just to try and keep Navratil over at the baseline. Get her to come in on something that's not too good, Paul. Well, that's right. Chrissy content to keep the ball deep. Force Martina to hit approach shots off balls that are not quite there. Fifteen love. Ladies and gentlemen, please, as a courtesy to both players, please do not shout during play. Thank you. As we've seen Martina forming the wall, as we call it in tennis, just really solid up at that net. Don't forget to stay with us, folks. This is live action, ladies semi-finals day. Following this match, Steffi Gruff, the number one seed against Pam Shriver. Chris knows that Martina is not overly confident, has not been in the last couple of matches. So if she can trade ground strokes from the baseline, keep that ball deep, keep Martina back there, that she figures is her best chance. And a wide return, Navratilova holds. She leads two games to one, final set. And it's my pleasure now to hand my microphone back to Tony Trabert. Thank you, Flurry. Martina's ball was long. Well, Tony, what an interesting stage in this match. Well, Chris has done a, a good job to get into this match, having been really embarrassed in the first set. And now we get down to two veterans, know one another's games very well. And as you and Fred said, it's going to be the net rusher against the patient ground stroker. A little more animation in Chris's face now than there was when she came out. She looked sort of dull and flat when she came out for the match. Martina taking the short ball and taking perfect net position, covering the line, but able to stretch cross court and hit the drop volley. She's so strong and, and which makes her so quick. She really is very agile. And no 
one in the game does that better than Martina, the stretch backhand volley. Martina once again coming into the net down the line and look at the stretch volley. We've seen that too many times for it to be a fluke. Great shot. Two break points for Navratilova. Out. Game is Navratilova. Navratilova leads 3 1, final set. Navratilova leads three games to one, final set. Well, a very relieved Martina getting that vital service break to lead 3 1. You would suspect that this would permit her to relax a little bit in terms of not being so tight in the match. She has a break, she can concentrate on her serve from now on and take chances on Chris's serve. Martina did everything she could to steal that point. Interesting the way Chris stepped around that short ball to hit the forehand. Now Martina in a bit of trouble at love 30. gotten a bad bounce. So we're going to end up chopping right down the back of that ball and popping up in the air. Dirty well, that was just the right time for the left hand's bread and butter, that wide swinging serve to the backhand. serve can get a little bit shaky. Tight situation. Looking at a second serve. Boy, Martina really hit a short serve. Martina comes in, but Chris whipping that cross court. More topspin than she normally puts on the ball, but good enough. Break point for Chris Everett, trying to get back on serve in this final set. steps in and really gets some pace on that two-hander and has gotten her service break back and she is now about to serve at 2-3 in the final set. Fifteen 
तस्तर What a backhand volley. Martina, good pass by Chris, but look at that angle by Martina. She's done a few of those today. Perfect. The ball's almost past her, and she not only controls it, but gets that good cross-court angle. 15-0. Same thing again, but Chrissy goes cross court this time, and what a shot. When they roll it cross court like that, Paul, they can get it a little lower normally because they got some extra top spin on it. That's right, over the lower part of the net. 30 15. <laughs> Martina relentlessly attacking. Well, this is just 14, great tennis 15. from the leading ladies. Another super passing shot from Chris. We're either seeing a great volley by Martina or, a, or just as good a passing shot from Chris. Forty thirty. Well, that to me was interesting right there because the point before, Chris spun a first serve and Martina took it and came in behind it. That time, Chris hit a harder first serve than she normally tries, got it in, but it came back faster and she got handcuffed. Forty thirty. Volleying from right off her shoelaces, Martina can't make the drop volley. And it is 3-0 in the final set. Three games all, this final is set. what you would expect from two of the all-time great tennis players in a semifinal at Wimbledon. Notice Martina's shirt blowing there. It is gusty down on that center court. Fifteen left. If she has her choice, Paul, this would be the time you'd try to tell Chris to make Martina hit forehands and forehand volleys, which is supposedly her weaker side. Well, that's right, Tony. Martina probably has one of the best backhand volleys in tennis, men or women. Uh, and, uh, but I'm sure Chrissy knows that. Sure, but you can't always direct it where you want it either. They're dictating a lot of the policy. There it is. That's the forehand volley that can be a little shaky at times. Sometimes Martina gets to swing in at the high forehand volley and makes some errors. backhand volley have a look at this down low martina gets down and it's a beautiful backhand volley cross court That is the 40, fifth double fault in this match by Martina. She's served one ace.
Chris, no aces and three doubles. My unofficial account. Both players, Martina holds and leads 4-3, final set. Action with Chris serving at 3-4, final set. Well, I think the pictures tell the story, Tony. This is just exceptional tennis we're, we're seeing out here. You would expect it from these two ladies. Following this match, Steffi Graf, the number one seed against third seeded Pam Shriver in the other semifinal. Absolutely marvelous. A very, very strong return by Martina. Well, that's just a great shot by Chris. Short preparation with the racket, so she used the speed on Martina's ball. Direct that down the line, 40-15. Try to take a full swing at a ball like that. It was hit that hard, you have very little hope. Game is never full tennis. For all and coming up with new tennis balls. And Paul, do you expect someone to Four crack? Final set. Or do you expect someone to just come up with a couple of extra special shots at the right time? Well, at this level, I really don't expect the players to crack. The two of the greatest players ever, you know, possibly the two greatest ever in women's tennis uh, until uh, Steffi came along, of course, when you think wow. of great champions, you think of Margaret Court and Billie Jean King and a lot of others, but I don't expect these ladies to uh, crack. So someone's going to have to come up with some extra good stuff then to get a break for all final set. But I do think, though, Tony, that the crowd could become a factor in this match. They're very squarely behind Chris Everett at this point, and I think the longer it goes, we see a good forehand volley by Martina to set up the overhead. They're firmly behind Chris Everett, and I think the longer this goes, the more they'll become a factor. problem for Chris is that she will be serving from behind throughout this the remainder of this match always trying to catch up unless she can get the break and also a reminder there is no tie break in this final set well as the sun just comes out from behind the clouds and Martina throwing the ball that way Martina has made a bushel basket full of those backhand volleys, just like this one.
Now Ratsalova leads 5-4. Martina's going to be coming at you. Well, the Chris Everett trademark. Pinpoint accuracy on the passing shots. Beautiful approach by Martina, but the response from Chrissy was just as good. There they go, Paul. They're starting to call out for their favorites now, like you say at the end of every <laughs> near the end of every match. Get more vocal. shot under tremendous pressure by Martina. Well, this shot Martina comes up with, you can't say anything about it. It's just a, excuse me, what a great shot. 40-30, 4-5, final set. Just see the difference in the comfort zone of the two when they get to the net. Martina moves so instinctively at the net, and for Chris, he's never totally comfortable. Deuce. It's long, and it is match point. Advantage, Miss Navratilova. How quickly it's changed from 40 love to match point for Martina. <laughs> what a tough assignment. To always be the one that has to make the good shot and that's what happens when you're a baseliner match point and Chrissy comes up with a shot that very few players could have hit at that point in a match martina was fading or covering to the cross court so it is deuce shot by Chris, but it's the forehand volley that catches the net. Well, this time Martina gets the volley, but 
just hits the tape on that forehand volley. Bent down nice and low, but she hits a little bit flat. Game point forever, trying to get to five all in this final set. shoe tops. Well, Martina finally gets a chance yeah. to come in. Chris hits a great slice. Look at that half volley. What great control and feel she has on that backhand side, Tony. You're absolutely right. And Chris had no choice. She did a terrific job just to get the ball down in that situation. So it's deuce once again. Depends on it, Tony, and uh, terrific stuff. slow to get in and it cost her the point she got the lob over Martina's head Martina's going to take a little rest well that even got Martina's coach Tim Gullickson off his seat if they show this one again watch where, where Chris is when she makes her drop volley or attempts a drop volley she's very deep now she gets a lob over Martina's head now she doesn't come in at all she's late getting there behind the service line when she attempts this drop volley and that cost her the point. She could have been into a normal volleying position and a wonderful pass by Martina, but she should not have gotten that opportunity. So again, it is deuce. Terrific tennis. Well, Chris comes right back at Martina and hits the sideline, bringing up the chalk on that approach shot. Martina was motioning. I should have lobbed defensively. Don't try an impossible passing shot from that situation. Game point. It was good. Called good. Martina doesn't believe it. She thought it was long. It was very, very close. Game is over. She's saying it was so far out. Here's another look. Let's have a look at it. Very easy pass from Chris. She goes straight at Martina. Looks pretty long from here, too. the players know it or not I assume they do here's another look replays are so inconclusive in this kind of a situation but once an, a, a player argues with an umpire about a call it automatically gives them no chance to get it changed so it is history and it's now five all final set no tie break in his final set someone's gonna have to win two games in a row two hours and one minute well, that's one of the best games of tennis I've ever seen, Tony. And under this kind of pressure, this kind of a situation, it's marvelous. 15 left.
Gusty down there on that center court, swirling around. You can see Martina's hair blowing. That makes it difficult when that ball goes up on the toss. It'll move some. kind of conditions sometimes a ball that's hit softly is more difficult to handle than the ball that's hit hard because the wind will blow it around and martina finishes off that point but the volley before was the one that set it up Self-preservation could be a magic moment. Look out, Chris, and she blocks it in the open court. Martina can't believe she even got a racket on it. Well, once again, and Chrissy yelled out a squeal. I don't blame her. That ball was coming pretty hard. From point-blank range back to the live action, 40-15, five all, final set. Second ace. athletic move by Martina to get that forehand volley onto the stretch. Great shot. <laughs> Missed it. Surprise move by Chris taking a short Love ball. It. Coming in. She normally doesn't do that. And she missed the high forehand volley, so she's in trouble. Here's another look at the high volley. I'm not sure Chris realized this was being called out either, but it was. Pressure time now. For Navratilova, her approach shot hit smack on the baseline. Chris Everett fans were hoping it'd be called out. And wouldn't you hate to be in Chris's spot now, staying on that baseline and having to make all the good passing shots. Match point. Seven's turn to hit the ball onto the baseline. 15, 40. Martina looked up at her entourage and got a signal from somebody. Yes, it was good. She was hoping that ball would be long. Still two set points for Navratilova. Here is the tough one right here. And look out, here comes Martina.
Chris was able to get the lob down the backhand side. Martina tried to get around to make a smash and couldn't get a good piece of it. 30-40. Well, looks like he's going to know it. And going to end Richard Lum. So this is a sad situation because he really believed his shot was in the classy tennis match between two classy people and in the semifinals of Wimbledon. Chris's attempt on the forehand cross court caught the tape, hit the top of the net, and you can see her shaking her head. Well, the lady, she, she took it on the chin, went up and shook hands, but uh, Paul, your, just, just your view of the match in general. One of the greatest matches I've seen, and I, I thought the standard in the third set particularly was exceptional. There's that ball landing Gee, what a tough break. Looked like there was a little uh, little bit of dust. The umpire still hasn't put his hand out at this point. The stare from Martina may have influenced him. Fred Stahle has joined us. Fred, uh, what are your thoughts, please? Tremendous uh, final set in that match, but I hate to see it end in this controversy. I think Richard Lum uh, has been at fault on a couple of occasions throughout that match. He's forgotten the score that particular time. It was a long while before that linesman put his hand out to call that ball wide, and Richard Lum didn't realize it, and he, uh, he was all at sea, and he had to call the match for Martina. A very tough situation, two fine ladies, and it's a shame to see it end that way. I couldn't agree with you more. The Royal Box, box the Duchess of Kent, and everyone else showing their approval. So Martina Navratilova advances to the finals defeating Chris Everett 6 one 4 6 7 5 in two hours and nine minutes. And we'll be back shortly to see number one seed Steffi Graf play Pam Shriver, the number three seed, in the second semifinal.